If this is your first time, I'd like to see you one more time. Could you lift your hand? If this is your first time. Do you mind? Come on, give them a hand one more time. Look at you guys are outside right now. This is your first exposure to our church. What's this church doing? They're outside. Hey, we like to switch it up. Jesus works inside the building and outside the building. Can anybody say amen? I love preaching outside, so I'm super excited about this. I just feel raw, you know? Just feels like what Jesus would have done. Jesus had no sound system, yet they still followed him by the thousands. Jesus had no marketing team, yet he never had a problem with crowds. <laughs> he relied on the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to touch you, whether it's your first time, whether it's your hundredth time. You've come out, and by showing up, you're giving God a chance to reach you. So we just want to say congratulations for forgetting about the traffic, forgetting about all the reasons, and by coming out. We are so honored and privileged to have you here. You are noticed, and we see you. Thank you so much. Let's get ready for the word. Judges chapter 6, 11 through 16. I have something very specific I want to talk to you about tonight. I'm going to read two scriptures. This one from Judges, and then if you'll go there when you find Judges, somebody say Amen. Okay, there's 50 people who found judges. Let's get the other 1,500 of y'all. When you find judges, go ahead and say amen. We still got half the crowd. <laughs> get your phone out. Judges chapter 6, 11 through 16. I'd like you to see it. It's, of course, going to be on the stream. But there's something powerful about yourself in the Bible, your eyes in your own Bible. And then we're going to go to Joshua 1, 9, and then I'm going to preach. Then the angel of the Lord, this is Judges 6, 11 through 16. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Oprah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Ebiazar. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you need to stop hiding. Look at your other neighbor. You need to stop hiding. Okay. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, listen to these words. He's hiding under a wine press. The angel sees him and says this. Mighty hero. The Lord is with you. Wow. He says, sir, um, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened? Where are all the miracles you told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us, handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. I need somebody who loves Jesus to say, Send me. I need you to say it louder. Send me. Okay, okay. But the Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan's the weakest tribe in all of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. That's the Bible. Joshua 1.9, one, one last scripture, and then I'll get into this. This is God speaking to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Look at your neighbor. Say, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to stop being intimidated. Look at your other neighbor. You need to stop being intimidated. Okay. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. All right. Are we ready to get into this tonight? Okay. Too many people believe that they can't be used by God until they are no longer afraid. The message I'm preaching to you tonight is this. Do it afraid. No, 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 you didn't hear me. The message is this. Do it afraid. Too many people are waiting until they got it all figured out. 
till it makes sense. They're not nervous anymore. They're not starting that business until, man, I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm just not sure. I, I don't know if we have the place yet and all the things. I'm not saying we do things haphazardly, but people who walk in faith don't wait till it feels right. You don't move by feelings. We move by faith. You see, there are too many people who are waiting to not be afraid. You see, courage is this. The Bible says be strong and courageous. Courage does not mean the absence of fear. It means you're going to do it in spite of being afraid. The Bible commands be strong and courageous. Do you know why he had to say this? Why do you think God put this command in the Bible? Because he knew there were going to be some people afraid. There were going to be some people nervous to start the business. There were going to be some people nervous to go out and tell people about Jesus. I can't preach like Pastor Marco. I don't sound like Christian. I ain't got a rack of beautiful teeth like Christian De La Rosa. I, I, you know, I mean, my goodness. I, I don't sound like Darion worshiping tonight. I mean, I am not gifted. I don't got what they got. They have training I don't have. They got people. I mean, Gavin, he's from a whole, you know, it's dad's Ivan. They got an anointing. You know, that's special. I'm not special like that. We begin to give all of our excuses, which is what they are, because God never asked one person ever in the Bible to do something they could do anyway. God only asks people to do things that he can do through them. Hear what I'm saying. If you're going to wait till you're no longer nervous or afraid, you will wait and not do anything for God. This series is I am a soul winner. This is the last message for this series. If you're going to be a soul winner, I have to just tell you something. You're going to meet all kinds of people. You're going to witness, and some people, it's going to seem like the moment you just say, Jesus loves you. They start weeping. <laughs> Pray for me. I receive God. My dad calls those minnows. He said, Gavin, there's all kinds of fish. There's minnows. Those are the people you just say, do you know God sees you today? <laughs> I want to be saved. But then he says, Gavin, there are sharks. You got minnows, those are the easy ones. But my dad taught me my whole life, not every single fish is the same. You got minnows, they're easy to catch. The harvest is ripe. Those people are just waiting. But then there's those sharks. The ones that they'd rather debate you for hours. They'd rather sit there and say, well, I went to church before, and I got hurt at church, and they didn't sit me at the right seat, and I was, they didn't pay attention to me, and they, you got all of these reasons. They, they got all of these reasons not to know Jesus, but really what's going on is they don't want to give up their sin. You got sharks, you know, those people who literally, they got to hear about hell before they get saved. <laughs> they're the ones that my dad said son this is why we got to make sure we keep preaching about hell because hell is the only way some of these people will repent because at the end of the day you're only going to one of the other places never forget this you will live forever every person out here you will have eternal life it just might be in heaven or it might be in hell but every person is going to live forever you see, we are too controlled by our feelings. Let me just ask you a question about your feelings. How many times have you felt like doing what God wanted you to do? I don't know about y'all, but I still sometimes feel like I don't want to get up and go to church. I felt that before. I was up all night the night before. I got a brand new baby. She's 15 weeks old. Sometimes things happen with your baby. You're tired. You're like, you know, Christians got it. You know, like if I just call in, it might be okay. You know, right? You're tempted. There's a feeling. Your flesh is constantly trying to talk you out of God's will. I don't know about you, but I, have you ever felt like, you know what? I don't want to tithe anymore. 
my goodness, the way our life is, our house, our business, I don't know, 10%, I did work for this money, I, you know, I, have you ever been tempted, just like felt like knocking somebody out in the jaw, just, just, you were looking at them, they were talking to you, and it was just so perfect, like you were imagining the fist just coming with the velocity, just, just the perfect contact right between the cheekbone, the front of the chin, you're like, man, if I could just, oh, they're talking, they're just, it's those people that just are literally, it seems like they're called to annoy you. Am I the only person who's real in here? Or have you ever had trouble forgiving somebody? Have you ever had trouble being around somebody who's acting like the sinner they are? Your feelings were never meant to lead you in anything. You see, the Bible says here, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Somebody say intimidation. Okay, well, intimidation is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear only comes three ways. Are you ready? Write these down. There's only three ways that you will have the spirit of intimidation and fear. Tonight, we're breaking off intimidation of every person under the sound of my voice. Here's the three ways. Number one. It comes through words. You see, spirits, they ride on the wave of words. Your mama might have said something. Your father could have said something. Your uncles and aunts could have told you something about yourself. And the spirit of fear gripped your life. And for some of y'all, it happened years ago, but you still have it in your life right now. The second way that intimidation happens is it comes through traumatic circumstances. A car wreck. Suddenly losing somebody who dies quickly. Suddenly a family member just taken from you. One day they're with you. Next day they're sick. They die. Traumatic experiences. You can literally take on a spirit of fear from a traumatic experience. Number three, imagination. People literally are walking around the church, many afraid and in fear, and it's not even real what they fear. Your imagination, you've let it run wild. The Bible says you got to cast down imaginations, every high and lofty thought, you got to bring it into arrest. The word is arrest, like a policeman arresting a criminal. You have to bring it under subjection and arrest it. You say, you cannot be in my mind. You cannot be in my thoughts. You cannot be in my dreams. There's got to be a day that you say, my imagination will not rule my life. You see, when you give in to fear, I want you to know this. You are exercising faith. Every person is exercising faith all the time. Fear is faith in Satan's promises. It's faith. It's just faith in Satan's lies. Now, I got to tell you something about the devil. This is really important. When Jesus died on the cross and he rose again, he comes to his disciples and he's about to give them the great commission. Listen to what he says to them. All authority has been given to me. Now go. Now understand, how much is all? Does anybody know how much all is? Oh, it's all? All is all? Okay. So if all authority was given to Jesus, how much is left for the enemy? Okay, so no authority. Then he looks at us and he says, go. When Jesus said go, he transferred the authority through go. By saying go, make disciples. Go, preach the gospel. Go, heal the sick. He transferred all the authority. Now, this is what's amazing. Imagine that you're at a boxing match. You got to see this. You're at a championship boxing match, and you're watching the boxing match happen. Now, you're seeing the two heavyweights. They're going back and forth. You got a favorite. You're watching your guy, and, man, he gets beat bad in the first round, but he gets back up. It's not over. The second round, he beats the other guy. It's going back and forth, round by round by round. He's getting beat. The other guy's getting beat. You're sitting here. It's, a, it's an exciting fight. Watch this now. The end of the fight happens. They decide who the decider of the winner is, and they hold up your guy's hand. Now, listen, he's bloody. 
His eyes are busted open. He can't even see. His eyes are swelled shut. Ah, you know. He's, his nose is maybe broken. He, he's gone through a fight. So all of a sudden, they are about to present the belt. But walking in, all of a sudden comes a beautiful lady. She's walking up to the ring. You're like, what is she doing? She walks up, her hair's all done perfect. Her eyelashes are all done. Her makeup's done perfect. She walks into the ring. She gets under the ring, walks right up, and she says, I'll take that. She takes the belt. She takes the check. You see, that's the man's wife. <laughs> Watch this. What? So the man went through the fight. But she got to reap all the benefits. You see, the Bible says, look at this, that you are more than a conqueror. So understand what happened. Jesus fought the fight, but you got to hold the title. You got to have the crown. You get to have the trophies for the fight you didn't even fight. <laughs> so, so look at this. If you have fear, you're having faith. So what do we do? The devil has no authority, so he needs someone with authority to agree with his lie so it can actually produce something. You see, he has no authority to make anything happen in your life. He needs you who has authority to have a power to agree with his lie. Only by the power of your agreement does it happen. Somebody say, I disagree. So if you just learn how to disagree, the devil will have no foothold in your life. So I wonder how people felt in the Bible when God asked them to do it. Again. Can you imagine Abraham? Remember Abraham? God calls Abraham. He says this. I don't know if this would scare you. It would scare me. Abraham, you've been a great servant of mine. I'd like you to leave everything you know. I, you're going to go to a land. I, don't, I can't name it yet. Just trust me. I'd like you to pack up all your stuff. Say bye-bye to your other family. All the friends and home that you've made here. And I'd like you to just go. Just start walking. At this time, Abraham doesn't know what's going to happen. I don't know about you, but don't you think that Abraham felt a little nervous? He felt a little afraid. But Abraham was not a man of feelings. He was a man of faith. And men and women of faith, they have feelings, but in spite of their feelings, they obey. Let's think about this. Moses. How about Moses? Moses is an ex-murderer. He's fleed from his past. God comes to him and says, you got to go back to where you fleed from. He says, but, 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 God, God, I have a, st 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 he can't speak. You're going to be my mouthpiece, Moses. Ha, 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 how, ha, ha, how, ha. I don't know about you, but you might be a little bit afraid. What about David? David has only been with sheep his whole life. He's been out there writing songs, enjoying his time in the stars, dancing around. Got his favorite sheep over here, named them all. Samuel comes one day and says, you're going to be a king. Okay. And then one day as a teenager, he's faced with a giant that the grown-up men will not fight. And so a teenager does what the men should have done. What about every prophet in the Bible? Do you know that in the Old Testament, they stoned prophets? Like, if you got one prophecy wrong in the Old Testament, you are stoned to death. Today, we prophesy all the time. We get on national television, I prophesy this is going to happen. It doesn't happen. We don't even apologize. We have prophets everywhere, supposedly. I prophesy this, I prophesy that. But they don't have the weight of what it means to say, thus saith the Lord. There's a weight to that. Prophets in the Old Testament knew the weight. They wouldn't speak unless they were sure it was God because they would die if they got it wrong. There's, there's, there's some, but they did it in spite of their fear. How about Jesus going to the cross? 
Do you remember when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane? Remember what he prays? He must have been feeling it because he said these words. They're in the Bible. Lord, if it's possible, can this cup please pass from me? But not my will, not my feelings, not these lies. I know there's going to be pain like I've never imagined, but this is why I came. Not my will, but your will, God. But if it's possible, he's afraid. Do you remember when Jesus sends the disciples two by two? How about Luke 9, 2 through 6? Read this. Then Jesus sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Take nothing for your journey. Oh. You got nothing. You're not going to take nothing. You got no sleeping bags, no money. He instructs, don't take a walking stick. Don't take a traveler's bag. Don't take food. Don't take money or even a change of clothes. Where you go, stay in the same house when you leave. And if anybody refuses you or welcomes you, shake it off your feet. Go to the next town. So they began to circuit the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. They just began. Somebody say, you just got to begin. Okay, look, Mark 13, 11, he says this to him, but when you are arrested and stand trial, pause. He just told all of them, you're all going to get arrested, by the way. Would that make you, uh, some of y'all got records, <laughs> right? You're going to get arrested just for preaching about me. Now, look at this. He said, you're going to get arrested, but don't worry about what you're going to say. Just say what God tells you at this says at the time, but the original says, in the moment you need it, open your mouth and he'll fill it. You see, faith does not work by telling you everything ahead of time. Faith works moment by moment. God keeps you in the moment. He keeps you depending upon him. You see, when he told Peter to step out on the water, he didn't say, hey, Peter, by the way, um, when you step out on the water, this is H2O. So hydrogen and oxygen, they form this thing liquid called water. You can't actually walk in this liquid. You usually drown in the liquid or you swim in it, but you can't walk on it. So it's going to feel a little bit different under your feet. So while you're walking on the water, by the way, I want you to make sure that you're looking at me the whole time. Because if you don't and you look at the wind and the waves, you're going to look like a fool in front of all your friends. So just make sure you're looking at me, though. He didn't say that. What did he say? Come. Come. Crickets. I think we'd want a little bit more information, but God doesn't do that. He just says, come. He says, you got to begin. You see, this is what I want you to know about your feelings. Feelings are just that. They're just feelings. Feelings are just feelings. But you see, if we let our feelings lead us, we always get into trouble. How about Cain and Abel? Just one example. You ready for this? Do you remember when Cain, Abel, offered a better sacrifice than Cain? You guys remember that story? You remember what happened? It says that Cain's face went downcast. He's getting angry. God notices that he's in his feelings. So the Bible says God is such a good father. Look at the good fathership of God. He's such a good father, he notices your feelings. And then he comes and warns you if you keep following your feelings. So he comes to Cain and he says, Cain, why are you so downcast? He says, listen, even now, then he gives him the truth. Even now, Cain, you could go do the right thing. And if you did the right thing now, you could still get blessed. But be careful for Satan is at the door and he wants to devour you, but you must overcome him. You got to get over this. You see, your feelings were never meant to be something that led. Your faith was supposed to lead your feelings. Let me get somebody up here. Julissa, if you'll come up quick. Where's Julissa at? Julissa, come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Julissa. Give her a hand as she's coming up. We just went on a trip to Guatemala. And that is Julissa's home country. She came from Guatemala, still has family over there. And Julissa, when you were in Guatemala, just say briefly the kind of things that happened before you left. Yeah. Okay, so at the age of eight, um, the gang members shot our whole house in the middle of the night. 
So we had to uh, rush out of the small village where we were living and go hide at another village. Um, and I ended up in the United States by myself, without my parents, without my family. I went back when I was 15 years old, and uh, my brother committed suicide while I was out there. Um, and I had to recognize the body. He hung himself. Um, and then I come back to the United States, and uh, two years ago, I had to go back to Guatemala to recognize my mother's body um, I come back and then two months um, after that I'm leading leading worship on stage my phone's being blown up and uh, as soon as they get off stage Pastor Daly's waiting for me backstage and um, she gives me the news that my sister also passed away so I had to go back to Guatemala once again to do this exact thing so you're having trauma after trauma after trauma you had to identify your mom's dead body and you had to pick her up and put her in your own car. Yeah, my mom's body, well, it's a third world country. So my mom's body was given to me in a bag and I had to transfer my mom to the funeral services with my little, nie little niece because um, my dad also walked away from our, our family when all this was going on. So I give you a call. And I know of this story, of course, and everything that's happening. We're about to go on a missions trip. And I say, Julissa, I need you to lead this team. What did you feel when I asked you to do that? I felt a lot of fear. I mean, my life was going really well. I'm doing good. And I was like, I'm definitely not going back to Guatemala. I'm afraid that something will happen. I'm afraid that um, my life will take a left that turn. I don't know. I just don't want to go. I don't want to go back. And I remember when I was flying back to the United States the last time that I went out there, I told God I would never go back to my country because every time I went, there was something that just happened and it would hurt and break my heart. <laughs> So Julissa's like, I don't know. She's afraid. Plenty of reason. But she decides to say yes. And I literally, y'all, just was there for the people. Julissa ran everything. She ran all the flights, everything with everybody's luggage, all of the meals. She got over our hotels. Not only that, listen to what she's also doing. Julissa led worship at all of our meetings that these youth and these churches were getting saved. And who was my interpreter who preached with me? Julissa was preaching with me on stage, getting people saved. And who was in the meeting on Sunday morning? We went back to what church, Julissa? We went back to the church where I got saved. You got saved. Who was it? Your brother-in-law was there. Um, my whole family was there. My nieces, my nephews. We were doing ministry together. They came on the mission trip with us, so they were exposed to a lot. They also received a lot of healing from all this tra trauma that we've gone through as a family. Um, we're they, laying hands on them. Yeah. You're interpreting for me. We're prophesying. We're laying hands on these people, and Julissa's just crying. And I, I'm like, Julissa, you got to talk. I need you to interpret what's going on. I said, who is this? It's my, my brother-in-law. This is my uncle. This is my dad. All the people she had trauma. She's the example. She went back as the example. Give her a hand right now. Sometimes you got to do it afraid. Thank you so much. Sometimes you got to do it afraid. That was one of the most powerful trips in the whole trip. I'm looking at Julissa. And every time we would look at each other, she'd start crying. I said, I know why you're crying, because this is a victory for you. This is you looking at intimidation and fear and saying, Jesus is still in control. God is the power of my life. God's with us. Listen, we get too caught up in looking at ourselves. Can I just be honest? Maybe this is you. I have a couple examples here. Maybe one of these is you. You look at you. You see, Gideon, when God came to Gideon, he's hiding under the wine press. He's hiding under the wine press. Why is that significant? Because the wine press is where they would take the olives. They take olives. And the oil that is in the olive represents the anointing and the Holy Spirit. But you can't get what is inside of the olive, which is what you need. Unless the pressures, the anxieties, the, the, the torments, the trials have to press you from all sides. 
You see, it's the pressure on the olive that breaks the skin to let out the glory that's inside. You see, it's the pressure that's on the olive. It's that nervousness. It's those traumas that have, it's these things that you say, God, could you really use this? What the world needs is inside of you. What souls need is inside of you. There's a treasure, the Bible says, in earthen vessels. How does it come out? You're going to have to feel some pressure. You're going to have to feel some nervousness. You're going to have to go through moments where you're afraid. But if you will choose to say it's not just me, God is with me. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing it in spite of being afraid. God's going to let something out of you tonight. Many of you right now in a moment, we're going to pray and the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to break open. Intimidation will be set free. Fear is about to release because there's something that's got to come out. Number one, maybe you're this person. I was raised in a poor family with no money and no help. My parents divorced and they were in and out of relationships my whole life. My life was surrounded by violent speech and violent actions. Surviving was all that mattered. Fear was my constant companion and I trusted no one. I became addicted to drinking and drugs. I got caught up with the wrong people. I've never been able to speak well because I've kept all my emotions and thoughts trapped inside so I could protect myself from being betrayed. I feel like I'm God's worst sinner. And so I'm just happy to be going to heaven, but I won't ask too much of God because I don't deserve it. And I'm just hoping to not cause too much trouble. I can't be used by God for more. Or maybe you're this one. I was raised in a Christian family and we went to church every week. I know the Bible very well since I've been taught it my whole life. However, I never went all in for Jesus because I still had my own ambitions and my own dreams. My life has always been about me. I failed so many times in my private struggles and I still fall. It seems the same struggles over and over. I feel like a hypocrite. I'm weak. I can't speak to someone else right now when I have these imperfections in my own life. I feel like I preach something and I'm still struggling to live my own preaching. I can't be used by God for more. Or how about this last one? I'm just not gifted. I look around and I see anointed men and women everywhere around me. But I'm not like that. I don't have a voice like them. I don't have a personality like that. I'm not handsome or beautiful like they are. I don't have the training they've had. I don't have the friends with the connections like they have. I don't have the resources they have. I'm boring. I live a small life in my small house with the same job I've had for years. There's nothing exciting about me. I don't even think people notice when I come or when I don't. I want more friends. I want more connection. That's why I've been trying to come to church. Hopefully, someone will notice me and connect with me. That's all I'm hoping for. God definitely can't use me for more. You're seeing you. But God sees. God sees. It's not your perspective. He looks at Gideon and he sees mighty man of valor. He's hiding under a white, mighty man of valor. If you know the story, Gideon's army keeps getting strength and strength and strength to 300 people versus 132,000. You see, God will make sure he takes away all of your dependencies. He's going to take away the girlfriend you depend on. He's going to take, if you run to them, he'll make sure he's not for it. If you run to other people, what are you depending on? If it's not God, he'll make sure it falls through. He said, with 300, I can take out 132,000. Why? Because it's not just you, Gideon. You're seeing yourself. You're seeing your weakness. You're seeing all your problems. But God sees you and if you got the Holy Ghost, look at what he sees. He sees you and the person who took the stars and cast them into the sky. 
He sees you and the person who formed the mountains, the oceans, and the waters with the palm of his hand. He sees you and the person who started the seasons in their cycle, and they've never stopped cycling since that moment. He sees you and the one who enabled a hundred-year-old man and his wife to birth the promise, even in their old age. This provides that it's never too late for God's promises to come to pass, but rather it's only a matter of time for those who trust in God. He's the one who gave a young boy a dream of being a ruler for God, but that boy was betrayed by his own brothers, thrown into a pit put after the pit into a prison and even though he was in the prison God was in the prison even though he was in the pit God was in the pit he's there every step of the journey and he made sure his promise was fulfilled he's the one who took an ex-murderer named Moses with a stutter and made him a pastor of over two million people He's the one who doesn't need swords. He's the one who doesn't need spears and chariots to win a battle. But instead, like Jehoshaphat, he'll just say, praise me out loud. And he'll take your praise and he'll win the battle with praise. He's the God who takes teenagers and makes them into giant killers. He's the God who stops the sun for 24 hours just so his servant can win a battle in broad daylight and give him glory. He makes the blind see. He controls the weather. It obeys his command. He makes the lame walk. He heals diseases. He breaks addictions and sets the captives free. He takes tax collectors, prostitutes, and gangbangers and makes them disciples. He takes people like he, he takes a man like Paul, a number one hit man for the devil, and he turns him within three days into his number one hit man for God. He never loses. He's never surprised. He's never an emergency. Don't you get it? God isn't just looking at you tonight in San Bernardino. If you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, he's saying you have no excuses because you plus God is always the majority. Somebody hallelujah. I said you plus God is always the majority. Every person under the sound of my voice, close your eyes. You plus God is the majority. God's not just looking at you. He's looking at you with him. But for some of you tonight, I have two calls. Nobody moves until both of these calls happen. Eyes are closed. We're not looking around. The first one is this. Do you have God on your side? Because you have him inside of your heart. Do you know Jesus? If you don't know Jesus, you got to start there. You got to get started. He's the one who clears your fear. He's the one who's going to help you. Even though you're afraid, he's with you. You need Jesus on your side. Right now, every person... If you hear my voice and you say, I don't know Jesus and I'm not sure, I need you radically right now. We got one more call after this, but I need you to walk up here right to the front right now and don't waste any more time. Come right now. I want Jesus. Come, I'm seeing you coming from the back. Come on. Come on, all over this place. Do not hesitate. These people are coming right now from the back. You say, I want Jesus. They're coming up right here. Give them a hand clap. Give them a hand clap. I want Jesus. Come on, keep clapping right now. They're coming out of the aisles. They're coming from the back of the parking lot. We're outside tonight. They're still coming from the back. Look at this. This is beautiful. Come on, we got room for you. We got room for you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Do you know Jesus? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, she's bringing her up right now. Come on. This is what I want you to do. I want you to look at your neighbor and say these words. I want us all to be evangelists right now. Look at your neighbor and say, are you sure you're going to heaven? If they say they're not sure, would you say, I'll walk up there with you right now? Come on, just ask the person on your right and left. Are you sure you're going to heaven? If they say, I'm not sure, just say, I'll walk up with you right now and just take their hand and walk up. Come on, do we got anybody else? I'm fishing for souls now. We got them coming up right here. Give a hand. We're fishing for you. We love you. You matter to God. You matter to Jesus. 
coming up here on the left and the right. Now listen. As they're coming up, there's going to be somebody here. We're going to pray this prayer, and then we're going to do something extremely special, and the Holy Spirit's about to move. You're about to allow Jesus to come into your heart, forgive you of all your sins, and you're going to forgive yourself. And then we're going to walk you right over there to that water, and you're going to be baptized tonight. You don't need clothes. You don't need anything. You're going to get in right in the clothes that you have. Because the Bible says, repent, be saved, be baptized. So we have the water that's available tonight that you'll walk over there and get baptized. But right now, every person pray with me and then the Holy Spirit's going to touch everybody in this place. Let us pray this prayer out loud. Now, you got to make sure you hear yourself say these words so we can lead you to Jesus tonight. Make sure that you've confessed with your mouth out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I am yours. I receive your sacrifice. I believe you died on the cross and that you rose from the dead and that by your blood I am being cleansed and forgiven of my sin. Thank you, Lord. I am no longer guilty because I believe right now by faith I am saved. Thank you for being my Savior. I don't want to be the same. I want to be a disciple. Make me a disciple. Help me become a disciple from this moment forward. Amen. Everybody give a hand clap. Now, wait a second. Just here. Watch this. I want to challenge you guys. Every person listening and every person out there, what I'm about to ask is going to be powerful. Here's the second call. You might say, I just got saved. But listen. It is time right now that if you've given your sins to God, you might as well give your fears away as well. Every person right now, under the sound of my voice, I want you to put yourself in a position. And I want you to get with God, closing your eyes right now. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and help right now remove any fear or intimidation you have for sharing the gospel. Because let me tell you something. We're about to go into a series. And we are going to not only ask you to be in a DG. Because listen, if you are not a disciple, you're repenting right now. Every person who's out there, if you are not in a discipleship group, you are making a decision tonight to get into a discipleship group. And secondly, we are going to ask you to be a leader of a discipleship. Now, this is what you got to do. You got to be a disciple. And then it's time for you to make a disciple. God will help you. I understand you're nervous. I understand there's anxiety. But God says be strong and courageous. I'm with you. If you say right now, Gavin, I'm convicted by this message. I have not been dedicating to be a disciple. Or, you know what? I've been dodging this. But I will become a discipleship leader and get into a discipleship group. I need you to stand up right now as a declaration of what you're doing. Stand up. Everybody right now. You're saying, I'm getting into a group or I'm becoming a discipleship leader this next month. Come on. I see you right there. Yes. 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 Come on. If you're not in a group, you should be standing right now. Yes. Thank you. We got a married couple over here. Getting in a group. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, we got them coming. Getting in a group. Okay, lift your hands up right now. Because I'm going to pray for you. Because of, through your commitment, God will give you power. When you commit, God follows with the power. You got to commit. God follows you with the power. Oh, man, people are still standing. Thank you for this. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God, for touching these people. Now, right now. I need you to offer up to God what your fears and your traumas are. Every person up here, you know what they are. I need you to offer them up to the Lord right now. Put your hands in the air. Just begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to the Lord right now. Tell him what you're afraid of. Tell him what has happened. He knows the traumas of your life. He knows what's been going on. Come on, between you and the Lord. You're going to tell them because in a moment you're going to release them. And the Holy Spirit's about to touch you. Come on, tell them. Be honest with God. What has kept you back? Is it because you see yourself and you don't see the God who's inside of you? What is it that's been holding you back in fear? Is it a trauma that's happened? Was it words that somebody spoke to you? We're going to break that off in the name of Jesus. 
Is it your own imagination? And it's not even real. Every hand is lifted. You've offered it to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, from the back of this parking lot to the front of this stage, I say in Jesus' name, you are set free. Now give it over to God right now. Give it to the Lord. Let it go. Let it go. Put it in the hands of God right now. In the name of Jesus, we release you from the spirit of intimidation. From the spirit of fear. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. Come on. Just release it right now. Let God work with you. I see God moving in you. Let him do what he needs to do. The Holy Spirit's all over this parking lot. Be released right now from all intimidation and fear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just thank him that he's doing it right now. Thank him right now. I'll just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's doing it right now. Give up. Give it up. Give up all of those words. Your mama spoke to you. Your dad might have spoken to you. All the fears you had. You were just surviving. But now you're ready to thrive in Jesus. You don't want to survive anymore. Come on, you don't got to protect yourself the same. Let it go. Let the walls down, man of God. Let the walls down, daughter. Come on, he's touching you right there. He's touching right there. Be free. Be delivered. Be free and delivered. Come on, altar team, pray for them. They're getting delivered right up here. We got people over here on the left, over here. Make sure you're praying with them, agreeing with them. Come on, I'm going to ask you right now to be the family of God. If there's somebody standing next to you right now, I want you to just reach over right now and just touch them on the back. Just touch them on the shoulder. If they're standing next to you, if you're sitting close by, I want somebody with every person who's standing right now. Come on, be the family of God right now. Let's agree with them in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's let prayer rise. Let's let boldness rise. These people need freedom. These people might have been traumatized or hurt. Jesus is in the business of healing wounds. Jesus, right under this open sky in San Bernardino, the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. Come on, just receive it, girl. Just receive it, baby. It's okay. God's with you. You're his daughter. Receive it, brother. I see you right there. Come on. Anybody who doesn't have somebody standing with them, go up and stand with them right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being the family of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, just touch us, God. All the way in the back, God sees you. God sees you. Let it go. Lift it up to Jesus right now. Lift it up to him right now. Let go of the words. They don't have power over you anymore. Let go of the trauma. You don't have to be afraid. God is with you. He never loses a battle. He's strong and mighty. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Look at this prayer. As we offer up the aroma, people are getting set free right now. This is so beautiful. Or God Almighty. There's a healing presence that's coming in right now as well. I'm sensing multiple people on my left. You're feeling the pain. There was a pain in your right knee when you came in, a couple of you in your left leg. You're getting healed right now. In the place of freedom, God is taking every ailment by his power. Come on. We're not, we're not crazy about anything but you right now. We're crazy about loving you. We're crazy about supporting you. We're your family. We're here for you. The love of God is coming through us to you. Allow that love to penetrate your heart. Let it go. Oh my gosh, so many of you are getting breakthrough, but so many of you are so close. Just release it to God. It's by faith. I just let it go, God. From this night on, God, I'm no longer ashamed. I'm not afraid. God, you see me tonight. Those words are broken in Jesus' name. That trauma is broken in Jesus' name. That imagination, you take control tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, let your spirit just permeate this atmosphere.
If you say, I'm not any longer afraid of the gospel, if you're sitting down or if you're standing, I want you to stand up right now and give God praise. You're not ashamed of the gospel. Stand up on your feet right now. If you are not ashamed of the gospel, begin clapping for what God's doing. Come on, give him praise for what he's doing right now. He's moving in all these people. Now, if you are standing here right now, I'm going to say it one last time. If you are a part of this church, this is a disciple-making church. You are needed by God. This month, starting on Sunday, please realize, Pastor Marco will be preaching and you will be challenged. But you have made up your mind tonight that you are becoming a disciple or that you are about to step out and let God take your fears away. It's okay if you do it afraid. It's okay if you do it afraid because God's with you. Does everybody say amen tonight? And was this a blessing? God bless you tonight. Thank you so much. Awesome. Praise God. As people are praying tonight, if anybody here tonight is saying, I'm serious about my decision to follow Jesus and I want to get baptized tonight, we have our baptism pools ready to go. The water's warm. We're ready for you. Our baptism team is ready over here. So altar team, if, you, if there's someone in front of you that are saying, I want to get baptized, I want to give my life to Jesus, take them right over to your left over here.